Welcome back friends. The application is coming along and we're ready for the next step, routing. Routing is our way of navigating between components, which represent our pages. It's the same as when you visit a website and click on a link and are navigated to a different page. To accomplish this in Angular, we will use the Angular router. If a user of the Homes application wants to investigate a given property, they need a way to find out more details. We'll create a details component and we'll add routing support so that users can navigate to that new component. We need to configure the application to support routing and route to this component. During setup, we could have included routing in some of this configuration automatically, but I thought it would be more fun for us to add it ourselves. To start things off, we need to enable routing in the application. In main.ts, import provide router wrapped in curly braces from at angular forward slash router. The provide router function sets up the required functionality for our app to support routing. As a second parameter to bootstrap application, add a JavaScript literal with one property called providers. Set the providers property value to be an array. Then as an entry to the array, add a call to the provide router function while passing in an empty array as a parameter. This empty array represents our application routes. Routes define which paths link to components in the application. We haven't defined any routes just yet. We're gonna take care of that and then return here to replace this array. To create the routes, we'll first start by creating a file under source forward slash app called routes.ts. Open routes.ts and let's update it by adding the following. Import routes, that's with a capital R, from at angular forward slash router. Home component from dot forward slash home forward slash home dot component. Next, let's create a const variable called route config, that's camel case, and make that of type routes. Assign it a value of an empty array. We'll update this in just a moment. We need the route config variable to be available to files that import our routes, so let's add an export line. Export default route config. Next, we need to update the application to display components based on the current route. Now we'll do that in app.component.ts. Start by importing router module wrapped in curly braces from at angular forward slash router. Then update the imports array of the component metadata and add router module as an entry to that array. Now we can use features of the router in our application, great. In the template for this component, replace the child contents of the section with the content class with the router-outlet directive. Use the same syntax that we use to reference components in a template because we'll follow that same pattern, which is using angle brackets to surround the element name. While this directive has similar syntax to our components, take note that in this case, we're adding functionality with the directive, but not including a template. This is where each component that we route to will be displayed. Now we didn't change any of the surrounding HTML. That HTML will persist between pages as we navigate through the application. If we save the application and check the browser, it will display a blank screen with just the header. Now, this is expected behavior because we haven't defined any routes just yet. Let's update the app and fix this. A great next goal would be getting the home page to display again. Well, let's handle that now. In routes.ts, we need to create a route for the home page. In the route config array, let's add a new entry. This entry is an object literal that represents a route. Inside the object literal, add a path property with the value of empty string. The path represents which URL matches which component. When users visit the app, we want them to be routed to the home component by default. That's why this path is empty. 
add another property called component and set the value to be the home component class. To make our application even better, we're going to also set the page title for each route. To do that, add a title property and set it to the string value home page. All right, save this code. In main.ts, we're going to update the application to use our new routes.ts route definitions. Let's add an import to the file import list. Import route config camel case from dot forward slash app forward slash routes. Now in this case, don't surround route config in curly braces. This gives us access to the route config property that we defined. Now we're going to update the provide router function call in the providers array by replacing the empty array with our route config value. Save this code and return to the browser. Now in the browser, we find a rendered home page. The default route now routes users to the home component. Now this is great progress so far. Excellent work. Let's make some more updates to navigate to the details view for each property. Let's start by creating the details component with the Angular CLI. From the command line, run the following command. ng g c details dash dash standalone dash dash inline dash template. We're using abbreviations with this command, so let's cover each one to ensure that everyone is able to follow along. NG is the Angular CLI. G is the short form of generate. C is the short form of component, which is what we're generating. Details is the name of the component. Standalone instructs the CLI to generate the component as a standalone component. Inline-template instructs the CLI to include a template property in the component decorator's metadata. I use this setup to reduce the number of files generated and to save myself some typing later. All right, we've generated the details component and it's available in our project structure. Now we need a route so that users can navigate to the component. We're gonna make two updates. First, we're gonna add a new route to the routes.ts file. Second, we're gonna add a link to the details page to the housing dash list component. In routes.ts, let's import details component from dot forward slash details forward slash details dot component. Next, add another entry to the route config array. In the object literal for the new entry, add a path property with the string value details. Then add a component property with the value being a reference to the details component that we just imported. And finally, add a title property with the string value details page. In housing-location.component.ts, we need to update the template property of the component decorator metadata to include an anchor element as the last child of the section element. Set the display text of the anchor to learn more. At this point, we're gonna take advantage of some of Angular's powerful routing features. Instead of adding an href attribute to the anchor element, we'll add a router link directive. This directive allows us to extend the functionality of the anchor element that makes working with app navigation more convenient. First, we need to import the router module from Angular forward slash router. Next, update the component decorator metadata imports array, adding another entry for router module. Now, update the anchor element to include a router link, and that's camel case attribute, and assign it the string value forward slash details. Save this code and check the browser. Now in the browser, we find a link beneath each listing. Fantastic, this is exactly what we want. Now let's click on a given link to view the details for the housing location listing. Wait, what happened here? Well, we navigated correctly to the details page, but there are two things missing from this page. First, we haven't added any template or styling code. 
We already know how to solve that problem. We'll update the template with the appropriate code. But there's a second issue that we have to resolve. How will we know which housing location to display the details for? We need some way to identify which housing location the user clicked on so that we can display the correct data. In Angular, there are multiple ways to solve this problem. We can pass data directly to the route by taking advantage of some router features like being able to pass state and data to a route, or we can instead pass some sort of identifier via the URL and then reference the housing location by that ID. In this case, we're gonna follow the latter path and send information to the details route via the URL. In housing-location.component.ts, we need to update the anchor element in the template of the component. First, surround the router link directive in square brackets. Now, this is for property binding, and it means that the right-hand side value will support dynamic values and more than just strings. This will come in handy in a moment. As for the value of the router link, we're going to update it to be an array with the first entry being the string forward slash details, the next entry will be housing location dot ID. Now be sure to wrap this entire value in quotes. Now I'm using double quotes to wrap the value and then for the details path, I used single quotes. Save this code and we'll move on to the next step. The learn more links now have a new URL, forward slash details, forward slash a number whatever the specified ID is. Perfect. But if you were to test this code right now in the browser, it would not work because there is no route that matches this path. In routes.ts, there are only two routes defined, the default empty path route and the details route. If we want that to match against the URLs we just created, then we need to define a route that matches that format. Specifically, we need it to be able to match the URL format forward slash details forward slash another value that we don't know beforehand. We'll use parameterized routes in Angular for this job. Let's update the routes in routes.ts. In the route configurate, update the details route entry. Set the path property to details forward slash colon ID, the colon ID portion is a placeholder for the parameter value we'll receive in the URLs that match against this route. If we save this code and check the browser, the links to the details page are working again. This is wonderful. The URL is unique for each of the housing locations, which means that we now have a way to display the correct details for each selected housing location. In details.component.ts, we're going to update the code to get access to that URL parameter so we can use it in our component. Let's import inject from angular forward slash core as well as import activated route from angular forward slash router. Next, in the body of the details component class, we'll add a property class route of type activated route. The activated route is a reference to the current route we're matched against in the application. From there, we can get access to the vital route information, including the parameters we need to find our data. Also, let's create another property called housing location ID and set the value to zero. Next, create a method that accepts no parameters named constructor. We'll make our next changes in the body of the constructor. Assign this.housingLocationID the value this.route.snapshot.params open square brackets quotes ID quote close square bracket. Now we expect the ID to be a numeric value, so let's convert it to a number by passing this entire right hand side expression to the number class, but we don't need to instantiate a new instance here. Finally, let's update our template in the component decorator metadata. Use interpolation to append housing location ID to the details work text. Save this code and let's check the browser. Clicking on the learn more link now navigates to a customized details page. Each page renders the ID on the screen. 
Now, I can guess what you might be thinking. What about the rest of the detail for the housing location? Great questions, and we're going to solve those in the next section. Friends, we've done some really great work in this section. We've learned how to navigate in our application using the Angular router and the router link directive. We've learned how to pass information to a route using the parameterized routes and retrieve information from a route in a component using the activated route feature. In the next section, we'll continue our journey. So catch you in the next one.